What's going on guys, Scar coming at you with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, we're going to be diving into Standard. I think I'm going to actually be playing Ranked in this video. Yes, we're going to play some Ranked. Uh, my rank is very terrible, so I got to really grind up. I think, I don't even know if I'm in Silver at the moment, because I legit didn't play at all in the month of July for the most part. So, we're going to be grinding some Ranked. Uh, we're going to go in with some Mono Blue Flash, as you can kind of see here. Overall, the deck plays pretty fun. I mean, with the Fairy gone, Flash is kind of back. I decided to go with a more of a Mono Blue format. I know Simic Ramp our Simic Flash is probably a little bit better just because the things are a little bigger. But here we go a little bit more on the control route with like things that bounce and things back from our opponent's graveyard. We get some card advantage. Uh, we're kind of going along that route of if you've seen in Historic, if you played any Historic, it's kind of like that mono blue tempo kind of feel where we're kind of singing in for some things, getting some value out of it. You know, if we get some Sea Dash or Octopuses on some of our creatures, get a draw effect if you deal some damage. Play Stone Cold Serpent as a little bit of utility to kind of, you know, uh, we can kind of cast it for X. The deck's not very expensive. The biggest thing we have in the deck is three mana, so we're not really going in for like big creatures. So overall, the overall value of the deck starts very small. Like if we're playing Ops, we're playing the Salamander, we're playing Sailors, things like that. I also threw a couple cards in just because I think in the current meta, I'm going to see a lot of red and green just because I feel like those decks are the top two currently in the meta just because they're the most aggressive and... You know, there's a, probably a few other cards you could probably look for, but I didn't want to go too heavy into the meta, but I kind of want to keep it an even balance. Um, I did make a sideboard for this deck, so if you did want to play it in a traditional way. Uh, this deck is also fairly cheap. It doesn't really play anything super duper expensive. I think there's only maybe like eight rares in the deck, but you could probably get, get around that by playing a couple cheaper cards. Um, I know that overall, I mean, the deck is fairly cheap. But guys, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to know I post more videos, hit that subscribe button. But let's dive into the deck, kind of figure it out, and then play some games and kind of see how we do. So the first card up in the deck is a pretty obvious one. I mean, the goal here is we're kind of playing a balance of non-creature spells and creatures. So it's like a fairly even deck. Uh, we get the benefit of playing things for flash. So we'll try to play a lot of things with instant speed. So not really too much in the sorcery way, but we're playing cards that, you know, we can play on our opponent's turn, things with flash. Just take advantage of reacting to what our opponent's doing rather than kind of playing things on our turn. There's a couple cards that we can only play on our turn, but that's okay. Uh, like the Stone Cold Serpent's really, I think, the only card in the deck that's really more of a, we have to cast it on our turn. But everything other than that is, I think, instant or sorcery speed, or instant or flash. Uh, so we start off with the four ops. Uh, ops pretty solid just because we can scry, we get to draw a card. So card advantage is always a good thing. Uh, dig a little bit deeper, scry to kind of fix maybe the top card, draw a good card, hopefully to fix it. Next card up is the Salamander. I think it's an overall pretty good card. The deck plays a good amount of uh, spells in the deck to make this ability that it has of the DAP4. If you don't know what DAP is, you get plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, this one has four, so this one gets four plus one, plus one counters. And then it costs one less for each activated ability. Uh, each active, The ability costs less for each instant or sorcery spell in our graveyard. So it's going to get go down pretty pretty good in the early game it hits your opponent for one but in the later game if we can get it like to you know three or four sorcery or instant speeds in our instant cards in the graveyard we can definitely um get this for cheaper i mean even if we draw it in the late game you know dropping this for one and then paying only one to actually uh make it a five five is pretty good uh if our opponent doesn't recognize it and you know swings in maybe and doesn't realize we can just pump it uh we can maybe get a, a good block so it's one of our other cards that don't have flash, but overall it's a good value card late game. Kind of takes advantage because I don't really think there's too much people playing the extreme graveyard hate. There may be things from preventing us from getting things back from the graveyard, but we're not playing anything like that. So I think overall our graveyard's safe unless we get stuck against a modern green deck and they get a little slime guy who's just eating up our graveyard. But that's that's a, something for something else. But we'll kind of swing it and see what happens when we get there. Next start up is a Spectral Sailor. You guys know what this does. It's a one mana, one one fly, flying with flash. And in the late game, we can always tap four and draw a card. It's definitely a good target to also put a Sea Dash or Octopus on just because that's flying. You know, it's always going to fly over, make it a 2 2, get it guaranteed every time it deals damage, draw a card kind of thing. Definitely a good card. Final card up is Aether Gust. I only threw two in the library because I'm unsure of how much red uh, we're going to face or green. I didn't want to throw in too much and then become a dead card if we're not facing those colors. Uh, so I threw in two just because I assume. We're gonna have a good chance of pacing it maybe one out of every like three games we play depending on how many games we play we're probably gonna see red or green in it and it's just having a good card to kind of you know make our opponent decide if they want to draw it again or if they want to put it on the bottom uh pretty overall good card for the way i think the current meta is next card up is brian more cutthroat this is kind of like our bread and butter card this is gonna be the big guy that eventually gets larger and uh hopefully swing for some big damage at our opponent it gets a plus one plus one counter every time we play a spell on our opponent's turn so it's a very reactive uh card um we can always play this and play like a spectral sailor or even a spell 
and you know this this card is gonna get pumped up and in the later game as we have more mana and a lot of our stuff is cheaper maybe this thing will get even bigger and you know like swing for like five six seven who knows how many instants or sorceries especially if we draw it early on curve it's definitely a good card next card up is essence capture it's actually a pretty good uh counter spell just because it puts a plus one plus one counter up to one target creature we control and it counters target creature spell so it's if we're playing against a very heavy aggro meta that i'm expecting uh this card is definitely going to find a lot of targets and for two blue it's a pretty solid counter spell because it has the additional ability other than like uh, essence scatter which I, I believe does only counters a creature spell so it doesn't give you any benefit other than that then we play Lofty Denial because actually a lot of our creatures are flyers in the air. It's a two mana counter target spell. Let's control it pays one. But if you control a creature with flying, you counter that spell and let's control it pays four. So definitely good counter for this deck. Just like I said, we play the Salamanders, we play the Sailors, we play the Brazen Borrowers. Uh, it, so it's, it's going to definitely more than likely be at four most of the time, unless our opponent can do something to kind of get rid of our creature to then make make it cost less but overall in the early game you know making our opponent even pay an additional one could actually make or break whether or not they counter decide to keep it around or not and we get the brazen borrower just because of the dual uh ability you know it's a three mana three one or two mana instant bounce target not only permanent back to its own opponent controls back to its owner's hand so definitely a good bounce card i think for the deck it's actually like the dual ability you know we get the best of two cards out of here uh in the late game if they you know have something with like range or something or they just get something really big and you know we just want to make them replay it it's it's just good to make them bounce it back and then three one flash flyer is definitely very good in the late game too because when we're trying to get those final points of damage three one flying definitely gonna probably hit maybe unless they can kind of like do some damage to it but it's overall a pretty good card and we get the Sea or Octopus, which is kind of a cool card just because it's a three mana, two, two flash, or we can mutate it at flash speed, which is kind of what we're going to do in the deck. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So it's, this is what's going to give us our tempo. Uh, so it's like, a so really the idea is we're trying to just be very tempo heavy. Um, so this is going to be definitely a card that we're going to want to kind of draw early just so we can kind of keep our hand tempo going because no, nothing's worse than draw, playing like a mono blue deck and then running out of things to do um just because it's like a control slash aggro deck probably like i would say maybe more in the mid range when it comes to this deck but c dash octopus is definitely a good card for this deck just to help us keep our card advantage and we play the sinister sabotage i think it's overall the best of um of the counter spells that cost three mana we could also play uh like cancel but cancel doesn't really do anything and then i i can't remember the card off the top of my head but it's a three mana counter that came from ikoria where we can also cycle so it's either this or that uh the one thing with the counter from ikoria we can tap it for two and cycle it for and draw a card but here we can kind of surveil so if we don't like the top card we just throw it in the graveyard which is not the worst thing i mean if we don't really need a land we can always throw a land in there or you know maybe we have maybe it's an either guys we're not playing against red or green we can always throw one of those in there but overall it's a pretty solid uh counter spell for three mana stone cold serpent kind of rounds out the deck just because you know we want maybe we just want something a little bit bigger maybe something to finish the game uh put put the seed or octopus on that bad boy you know make it a make it a two two plus whatever counters we have on it and having protection from multicolor i mean it's not as good as maybe it used to be just because teferi was kind of like the one threat we really didn't want to get bounced by a stone cold serpent but the fact that it's reach and trample it definitely makes it a very good like blocker and or just a way to get some damage through especially in the late game if we have a lot of mana we can just make a very big stone cold serpent and maybe just finish out the game and then the mana base is pretty solid it's three castle of Antresses just for the scry and 19 islands like i said there's probably a budget way you can probably make this deck probably cut down some of the rares if you don't have them um I would say some of these rares are probably more of a benefit uh just that kind of helps just make the deck overall rounded but if you really just want to you could probably cut out like the brazen borrowers if you don't have those and probably just play like uh some sort of bounce spell and it's just be like unsummons a very cheap one or even i'm just trying to think if there's another instant one but unsummons a very good one just a one mana counter but the benefit here is we get the creature out of it so it's like the two for one kind of thing cedar octopus it's kind of tough to figure out what what's there to kind, to kind of balance this one out just because i can't really think of a card that does this other than the one in historic which is opportunity i believe if i'm not mistaken and that's only a one mana enchantment but i don't really think there's currently one that is just blue mana i think the only one i can think of is the the blue white one i can't think of the name off the top of my head it's the one with the people on it but if you deal damage it gets plus one plus one and lifelink and all that stuff too and you draw a card 
but overall i mean if the, if anything i would say sea Dash octopus is probably your best target to get just because it's gonna be one of those cards that's gonna be around if you're like very gonna be play a lot of mono blue centric decks or just a lot of blue decks because this is actually a card that you probably play in like simic ramp or in other like ramp uh other mutate style decks i mean sorry um and then also stone cold serpent's a good card to always have just because yet again it's another card that's gonna be another, around for another year it's a very good value you don't really need a lot of them i mean you can get a set of four of them if you ever want to work up to it just so you have a set of four for any other decks out there especially you want to play like something like selesnia counters or something like that it's a very good card for that and we only have we have two in the main board and we also have a sideboard like i said we made just because in case you want to play a, a best of three or if you want to make it in real life and maybe just have like a, a way to kind of have a, a starter base deck to kind of like then figure out how you want to build it based on your current local game store your current meta of the people you play um so we do have a sideboard as well but enough said with that with that guys let's dive into that kind of see how it goes hopefully win some games get up some ranks i don't really know how well we're gonna do just because i haven't really played the meta this will be actually the first time dipping in but i did play some play games with this deck to kind of figure out where i think the meta is so hopefully it, we get paired out pretty decently All right, so we're silver. Okay, so we at least made it back to silver. Um, this hand's playable. We got the briar. We got the briar board cut through. We got the salamander knob and some stuff. Yes, we can. We can definitely play this. I'm gonna say just because we're in the later, the bottom of the rank of the ladder, there's a good chance we may face a lot of mono red. Just because it's a very good deck to um to play in uh, this current standard. Just it's also very cheap when it comes to actually value cards. More than likely, this is going to be a cavalcade one. Just, just is my hunch. Um, do I want the card. Um, no. Do I want to block it though? What's the chance they may have? I think we play the stone coil. Make them want to have to kill this. I think is what we want to do. There's a good chance they may have a, a giant, but it's a plain cavalcade. Okay. I'm not going to take it. Maybe they have an infuriate. I'm not really worried about that. Yeah, I think the stage is okay. All right, so they're playing the typical mono red. We got a land. They have a shock. No, they have a proven champion, though. Interesting. Um, we didn't try to land, though. Question is, do I risk going to opt? I think we just attack him for one. Keep up, keep up the fervent champion. They do have an annex, which kind of sucks, but um. All right, let's do this. Let's let's see what they got. Hmm. What is that? Three one. Let's see if they want to burn another one. We'll put this over. Maybe they have a shock. Okay, they have another light up and they lose their annex. So that's that's a thing. Didn't try another land, though. That's kind of terrible. Let's get a little aggressive. Um, we'll attack with both, though. We'll draw a card here, hopefully draw on a land and then we keep stuff open. That is not a land. All right, well, in turn, but we're, we're, we got a good good kind of advantage here. We, we have a counter spell, so if they play a creature, we do have a way to counter it. All right, they're going to they're going to hold back. I'm just going to take the two unless they want to play something. They're thinking about it because they have something to hold to hold priority here. So something they got some some decision to make. I think we're going to Essence Scatter that, and they'll put a counter here. That's fine. It can't block, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, that's actually not a bad card in this situation, because we can always just bounce back like one of these Grim Initiates or something. Um, but I think I'm just going to swing it for five and then just see what I draw. Keep the Salamander back just in case of block, because I mean, that's a good blocker for, uh, for maybe the Rimnock Knight. Um, we'll say go. I could also play like a Brineborn Cutthroat or something just as a sacrifice.
Okay, so interesting. They keep a blocker. I don't know why, though. I guess because they're getting low. Uh, we'll just sacrifice it. All right. And this is why we kept around um, this. So this just fizzles out. We'll just bounce that back. So it's just a uh, one damage. You can give me an additional. It's fine. I don't mind about the additional two. This is actually kind of strange, though, that we didn't draw um, any sort of counter here. I mean, it's still going to do trample damage, so we're still going to draw a card. They get a 1-1 one, one out of it, so I mean, that's that's okay. Uh, we'll resolve it. Hey, there we go. So we see what they do here, because I mean, this will become a 2-2 two -two with Trample. They also have a... Um... I guess we'll just give this the plus one, plus one counter. So they'll have to equip it. Oh, they'll sit back. Okay, they didn't do it at instant speed. This is interesting. Is, is it four mana to equip... Equip uh, Embercleave? I feel like they missed that if it's not. No, it's only three. They could have equipped that. Not sure why they didn't do it the other way. Hmm. So, I mean, if we're getting a mono green, mono green or mono red situation, this is actually a pretty good hand. I'm going to keep and just kind of see how this goes, because we could actually slam um, slam a Stimp in for one. Kind of unsure, just because I don't, I don't know what they're playing. So I'm just going to pass. All right, they're playing something blue-black at least, so maybe it's okay. I think we're going to play this for two, though, because next turn we can hit them for uh, at least maybe four. If, if they're not playing some... Maybe they're playing Flash. That does make... um Okay. Maybe some sort of enchanty kind of deck? Um, we do have things to give things counters. They need like a, a Demir like enchants. They do have three mana. Okay. They're not doing anything though. We'll just play this. See what they do here. I mean, they. they okay. I mean, I'll draw a card. That's always good, right? I don't. That's not a very good card though for us. Unfortunately, Lofty Denial is not gonna be great. But we do have stuff to counter their creatures. Either Gus is kind of a dead card here. Um, yeah, well, Lofty Denial, I mean, that's actually a pretty solid hit, right? Because they don't have one mana open, so they were hoping for a Lofty Denial into something. Draw a card. Always good on advantage, and I mean, it's actually a pretty good draw, I think. I mean, unfortunately, the, we're not very quick. We're kind of like a control-y kind of... Um... Can I do this? So they're playing a very unfriendly, uh, like a very like aggro, like focus deck that's all about, um, you know, slowing, you know, slowing these creatures down. So I mean, our hand, like I said, is okay. Barber is good. Um, our, we're not in too big of a hurry. They're getting good, good card advantage. There's. It is unfortunate though if they find something. Okay, they like their top card. Though I think they need to do something here. Pest, all creatures get minus two, minus two until other turn. Um, what can I do here? I can't really do anything, so that's fine. So that's only a two one. Um, is there a way I can like go? Um, no, there's no way to go full control here, is there? Because there's still minus two, minus one. Um. Do I just... We'll do this. I want to mutate this onto here. So that's a little bit stronger. Um, we'll put it over. So it has a little bit bigger of a butt. My turn. So it's a 5-5. Five, five. Swing for 5, draw a card. Um, next turn, I think if they don't have anything here... Oh, Lofty Nile is good. That's actually a very good card because we can always play um, a Sailor for cheap. And then Lofty Nile for uh, big here. I wonder what their big card is, though. 
because they're playing like a demure control but i haven't really seen what the card is you know what what the, what, what is the goal here because they have a five five on the board and if i play any sort of spell on their turn it just gets bigger um they kind of tapped out so we'll do this Maybe they have a counter though. But we'll do this and see what happens. They're gonna cycle. And unfortunately that's game for them though. They don't have anything to do, but it's a good game. Uh we're on the play. I actually like this hand a lot. So I'm gonna keep because we can always see Dasher the following turn, depending on what our opponent's playing. They got dog sleeves, so there's a good chance they may actually be playing uh, mono red. Life gain? Oh, that's cool. I'm not gonna attack. We'll play our spectral sailor. We'll play our spectral sailor to your mono white so far. Do you want to block? No block? Okay. I will do this. I will get card advantage because if they play a pride mate, I'm not really worried about it. Also, this is the most lands I've had in all of the games. We have five already. We'll just bounce this back actually next turn. When they go to attack in with it, we'll we'll, we'll bounce it back because it's not really we're not really worried about it. Unfortunately for them, they don't know that though. And we'll just keep on getting card advantage because I mean getting card advantage is where it's at. Interesting. Well, this is where we go and we bounce this bad boy back. They can replay it, but they're not going to get the counters on it if they want to. All right, so they're going to try to gain some life. Gain a lot of life, I guess. I don't really know what they're trying to do here because that's only gain them so much life. I mean, I'm all about getting card advantage. Except when we're getting like all the same cards but next turn we can counter their pride mate because they're probably going to play their pride mate and then we'll kind of kill one of these in the process because their goal here is going to play the pride mate all right doggo do we like the doggo i don't mind the doggo um so we do this and then we'll essence capture this um we're going to give the counters here because they're not going to want to attack into that. Unless they want to sacrifice their doggo. So this is a 4-3. Alright, so they're going to pass, which is which is not bad. Um, They don't have any spells here, but they I guess they can hold priority. I guess, do they want to swing in? Do they want to block? I mean, they can sacrifice their dog. I mean, if you really want to sacrifice your dog in the process, that's fine. Is it really worth it to save a bird? Because, I mean, I could just, um... You know... I could just... Flash in a Brazen Borrower and block it. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain one life for each creature control with Vigilance. Interesting. So you gain three life. That's an interesting card. I could have countered, but I'm not. It's, eh, eh. We can't. We can't prevent this for long, and they're not going to get enough life. I don't think. So we'll swing in again. They can't prevent that. All right. So they're going to gain. They're going to. Interesting. That's fine. I think this turn we we counter. Um. Yeah. We'll counter that. You don't need another one. You, one's fine enough. Um, sure, we'll take another one of those. I don't mind getting some card advantage. That's fine. Um, yeah, you have my turn. Um, so this is what we'll do. We have three counters on this. Um, we'll swing it for, no, not activate ability. Oh, it's on a, I always forget. It's on a, whatchamacallit though. I can always, um, just, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, yeah. I can always get, draw a card. All right, that's fine. 
Another pride me. That's fine again. Pass to attacks. They're deciding. They really want to attack in. I mean, I don't know what they got. So they want to lose one to gain a life. I don't really know what's going on there. Is that really the play? I mean, they're tapped out, so we're just gonna bounce this back so they don't gain the life from that. All right, so they're four fours. My turn? I'll play one of these. And I'll also put a sea dash or octopus on it. So I can also, I can also, um, you know, Get some stuff. Lofty Denial is really good because they, they won't be able to do anything about that. So we'll attack him with these both. They're not going to want to attack in with the Pride Mates, are they? We'll draw two cards. Drawing deeper is good. I can always bounce things back. And another Brian Board Cutthroat is actually really good here in this situation. Because they may attack in with the Pride Mates thinking that they're going to be able to get through a four. Linden. Hmm. Do I like Linden? I don't like Linden. Oh, I could have played a Brian Board Cutthroat and actually countered. They're not very happy about this, are they? That's fine. We're at 19. Pass to attackers? My turn. So we'll do this. I could have played this before. Um, We'll play a Sailor. And then we'll also play an Octopus on here. So now we're going to draw actually three cards a turn. Yep, definitely over. And our opponent scoops. Opponent goes first. Um, can't really tell what's going on here, but I like this hand. We got we got a stone coil. We got a we got a sea dasher. So there's some tempo there. We got an either gust and a lofty denial. So there's some some interactive stuff to kind of prevent them from doing things. So I like seeing rule. Rule's good. Um, we'll put a sea that uh, yeah we'll put a sea dasher. We'll put a salamander down. We'll see what they do here. I should have probably the one thing is I kind of don't like is when this sticks. Because then it's like, what did they have for zero? That they Okay, they're playing Jund something. Alright, I mean, if you want to waste a kill spell on, on that, I mean, go go. I'll go for it. I am I am not mad about that. Um, Let's make sure they have it. They, have another, they can't use a Heartless Act on this, so that's good. But they can move through counters, so I will do that. Alright, they're taking two damage. Okay, that's fair. That's a good card. Let's see what they do here. It has protection from multicolor. So they can't block it. So we'll, we'll make this a 4-4. Four, four. Um, we'll do this over. Draw, draw a card. Nice. So we don't have anything right now, but we can always, uh... You can't. Mm. Paradise Druid. Interesting card here. I'll take three. Uh, this is Trample, so that's good. Um, I'm just going to attack in. I have ways to get through. So I'm not going to block with the Paradise Druid. So that means they're going to go for a big spell here. And having advantages on cards is always good. End turn. I could have on their draw step put a, a uh, Rat, Radha on the top of their library just after they drew, so then it's like they can't draw into it. Dinosaur. Ooh, sorry, bro. I'm gonna counter that one, though. Nice try. So, yeah, that's fine. I'll take three. Interesting. So they're tapped out. I'm going to attack in. They're, that's five of their damage. Mm. I'll put a stop here. Just because I want to wait until they draw. 
We'll either go set to uh, the top of their library after they draw. They want to if they want to, you know, do something about that. That's fine. There, now you can go. Mm, they have no mana open, do they? I think we just go ahead and we'll just counter the Bone Crusher, so... Um, we're on the play. I mean, it's not our most tempo-y kind of hand, but I guess we'll keep because we have three mana and we have stuff to do, so that's always good. It's not going to be very good, though, if we're playing, like, Mono Red, because that's going to be the one thing, like, it's going to be tough to, like, pr save a Brineborn right right off the bat, but we'll play Blue Mana and say go. Okay, this is actually good. This means they play a little bit slower. They could be playing, like, a... an Is It Flash kind of... Is It Spells kind of deck. It's kind of what it looks... Yeah, this is definitely Is It uh, Spells, but we're, we'll play our Brineborn while they're tapped out, so they can't really do anything about this. Um, we'll say we'll attack him for two. In turn. If they try to target this, we can always counter it. Interesting. Do I go the question is do I go aggressive? Yeah, I guess so. Do you wanna kill this now? Because I think they were gonna wait until combat. That's fine. I mean, we have a 3-1 with, with with abilities, so I'll attack him for three. Let's go. This is a very budget-friendly deck, actually, which is very good. Um, the one they're playing. Just because it plays a lot of things. They really... Maybe cast a non-creature spell? Hmm. I don't want to do anything about this. I kind of I want to save this. We'll... we'll, 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 we'll uh... We'll, we'll save that. We don't need the land. We already have another. We have enough land. We need, we need interaction. I'll hit for three. That's fine. Oh, Stormwing. Nice. Nice card. So yeah, they're definitely playing the Is It Prowess deck. This is definitely very cheap because you can definitely, you know, Is It Prowess is a, is a strong card. I'm going to swing in. They're not going to do anything about it. I'm going to let them pump on their following turn because they may try to go off. Um, we'll see Dasher on this. So we draw a card. I will put this under. So we still have for three. I could have put it over, but it's all good. Ah, oh, that's good. They may try to go off this turn, so that's it's gonna be fine. But whatever they do here, we'll just bounce back to Stormwing, so then it's pretty much nullifies it. Sprite Dragon, that's uh that's okay. We have borrowers, so we can always bounce back if anything comes too crazy. They're thinking about it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. Let's we'll counter that. We'll save our we'll save our borrower again. Don't need another land. A lot of land. First couple games were a little iffy. It's fine. I'm not really worried because they're only their tempo is kind of gone now. Um, so if they they um do anything here, it's not the biggest. We'll draw a card. Ops good. I can just bounce these back at the end of turn. Nullify them. I mean, I'll make them go off. Let them go off. It's fine. So it's six five. Go for attacks. This gets bounced back to your hands. Uh, we'll play this. We'll block the riddle form. Let's have a shock. We'll kill the riddle form. Take four. I could have saved mana open, uh, and I could have countered, but 
but I think it's okay because they yet again don't have a lot to do here. Very interesting they held the held that for after damage. They could have done one more damage. I mean, do they want to? That's the question. Do they want to exchange? I mean, I will all day swing into this. See if they want to do anything about it. Because at the end of the day, they're just giving me card advantage, so that's always good. Interesting. Don't do anything about it. I don't think they have a lot, so we'll return back to Storming here. Uh, then we'll play the other Borrower, right? I can't ca I can't not... Um, I can't not counter the- I can't ca uh, prevent the... Alright, so 3-3. Three, three. Cool. Alright, they got an opt. That's good. They, they got some momentum. That's good for them. Now they, I think they can still play the Storming, right? They have enough mana. They may, I don't know if they played the mana. That's fine. Okay, there they go. Play an Opt. If we draw a Stone Quality here, that'd be very good. But I, that's, it's unfortunate we haven't really drawn anything. Either Gus is actually really good here. Um. We'll play an op, making it seem like we're desperate. Um. No? Ooh, that's not very good, unfortunately. No attacks. Um, in turn. We'll put a stop at their thing. Let them draw. Uh, we'll either go there. Making them decide if they want to put it on top or bottom. All right, so they put it back on top. I mean, I have to block, because either way, if they don't... Okay, that's fine. Play up the stage, drawn two. So they have to play their sprite. Unfortunately, sprite's not going to resolve. Submit zero. So we're both in a game of, let's draw the best top deck. Because I know they don't have anything. A land. Riddle form. Good. Yeah, I have enough. I had to sit there and think for a second if I had enough to do both. And we'll scry. We'll fix our top mid. We'll fix our top cards. Get rid of all the lands. Oh, this is this is definitely a great, great uh couple cards. We'll get the salamander. Oh, okay. All right, so I mean, all in closing, I mean, I think what, we ended up playing like five games there in the course of this video, which I think overall, I mean, we played very well. I mean, the, the, I think the key thing you hear is not just to slam everything and kind of just play a little bit patient, as I feel like that kind of helped us out. Um, I mean, we could have went really like deep and heavy. And I think that last game we kind of lucked out there. I feel like our opponent may have just given up a little bit early, but I guess because we Castle Vantress there and kind of like scry the top of our library, our opponent was like, well, they must have gotten two good cards there. Um, but overall, I mean, the deck is very good. Um, I mean, like I said, it's very budget friendly. I'm sure, like I said, you could probably figure out a couple of things, get rid of the Castle of Vantresses maybe, and just put in a couple more additional islands. I would say the Sea Dash or Octopus helps keep the momentum because in the mini games I did draw and was able to just put it on something and just being able to draw cards off of it, I, I feel like really helped us out very good. Um, I don't know if it's going to beat Mono Red and mono green all the time i haven't i didn't even play mono green i don't know if anyone's playing it this low and i really only played mono red once and i'm not really sure what kind of version of it was it was it seemed a little bit more budget friendly but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below if you ended up liking this uh deck uh if you want to try it out yourself like the all the links and stuff will be posted in the description like the typical um but if you like this video guys hit that like button if you want to post more videos hit the subscribe button if you want to check out one of these other videos that youtube's recommending to you as i'm kind of like closing this out hit one of those if you want to but until next time i'll see you in the next video